Hello, it is Thursday, July 6th, 2023. I'm Chris Raymond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday puzzle, so we have a themed crossword today and uh, maybe a bit tougher than yesterday. Although I have to say, I was in the Daily Solve Discord chat server today just a moment ago, and it does seem as though people consider this a bit more approachable for a Thursday than maybe the average. So maybe a good one if you if you find Thursdays, uh, which are the kind of the wild card day of the crosswords, um, a bit intimidating. Anyway, we'll have to see. Thank you, by the way, to everybody for the incredibly kind uh, congratulations on the second anniversary of the Daily Solve yesterday. That was very, I was just very nice to see um, both on the comments and in the Discord server. Speaking of which, maybe I'll, I'll say that bit first today. You can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server in a link in the description field underneath the video. It's a nice friendly chat community. In any case, this Thursday wildcard edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Lewis Williams, Camtron, Henrik Koskinen, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shoalmaster, and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, for their generous support. I really do appreciate it. It really does keep this going. Uh, well, two, two years and running now, I suppose. So thank you to, to them. And thank you to everybody who's a patron of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate it. You can head over to patreon.com slash dailysolve to learn more about that and get those bonus videos. And as a benefactor, the official Daily Crosses, uh, Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. I also saw the New York Times has, is, has just published a Sunday puzzle from 1942, which uh, they, I, think, I think is the fir- maybe the first puzzle the Times published. And... Um, Maybe I'll do that for the Patreon campaign. I can't remember if I've solved that that puzzle before. I'll have to I'll have to figure out if I have. Um, and if not, maybe I'll maybe I'll solve it for the patrons. Um, I suspect I won't be brilliant at it because I assume it will contain references from 1942 that I might not know. So it might, might be safer to put that up on the private feed. Uh, we'll have to see. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Do subscribe to the channel on YouTube if you've not gotten around to that. Thank you to everybody who has. And now let's solve today's crossword, which is a debut construction by Alison Pertz. It's a Thursday puzzle, so it will have some kind of interesting theme. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And let's start solving. Christmas pudding ingredients. So Christmas pudding, um, I've made a Christmas pudding um, before. It's a um, very traditional British thing, and it's kind of a... Uh, um, it's got dried dr- dried fruits, and it's usually shaped like a kind of um, kind of like an upside down flower pot, I suppose. Uh, anyway, what would be in it? Sultanas or su- a suet, maybe? Um, traditionally, uh, you'd use beef fat suet uh, rather than you know butter or shortening or something like that. Anyway, let's see. So it might it might that might be the answer. More or less, sorta. Okay, I'm going to go with suet there because that's what I have used when I've made. Christmas pudding. Uh, World War II sub, or a Christmas pudding. World War II sub is a U-boat. There we go. Uh, call up is to evoke, maybe you evoke an image, you you call it up. Okay, right. I was thinking this doesn't look, this OBV doesn't look good, but the, the clue is clearly in a text, which I think is obs for obviously, where a dot may be a date. Where a dot may be a date. Uh, what is this? It's not T.S. Eliot. What is it? T.S.A.? Something? That doesn't look right either. The emptier it is, the more of it you have. The emptier a room is, the more room you have. Ah, right, that's clever. So what is this? Where a dot... Oh, maybe this isn't obs, but obvi. Obviously, that makes much more sense. Where a dot may be a date, a time something. How do I not... How am I just not getting this clue? Request regarding the ball game. Or instructions for answering the starred clues. So this must be "Take Me Out to the Ball Game" in the um, the classic baseball song. I think whose author had never attended a baseball game in his life, <laughs> which I find fascinating. Uh, so anyway, what are the rest of these? Respond, take me out. Response to a knock on the door. Their history is celebrated in March. What on earth do any of these have to do with each other? Earn or what answering the starred clues will do in each case. I, d- I don't know what that's getting at. Apologies if it's very obvious to you all. Do you mind? Someone might ask. But someone might ask. Artist studios and atelier, so a French term referring to an artist studio exactly as it says. 
Oh, a timeline. You could have a dot on a timeline, and that represents a historical date, of course. That makes sense. Conspiring with, in cahoots with? No. In league with? Could be, you could be conspiring someone with someone, be in league with them. Anago at a sushi restaurant. Or some, what kind of eel? Raw eel? It's from the underside of a hide. ATM button. I don't know, maybe this is wrong. Caption on a makeover photo, before and after. So after fits here. Sea eel? Not expected, unforeseen. Cesarean delivery. All right, so this looks like a cesarean section in childbirth, but in fact is referring to um, Caesar's famous Shakespearean uh, retort, et tu, Brute, et tu, Brute. You too, Brutus. And then, so what is from the underside? Oh, suede is from the underside of a hide. Right, that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. From the underside of an um, animal's hide. And then bug spray ingredient is, uh, oh, DEET is some sort of chemical. Yeah. And then spell misspell, e.g., <laughs> is to err, to make a mistake. So uh, you, need another, you need another S in there. Uh, to So this is... A typo, an error. It's a clever clue. ATM button, enter. Okay, so this was C. Inago is CEO. There we have it. Okay. So that I think that's probably distinguishing between what saltwater or freshwater eels. Okay, what do we have up here? Bantu's jukebox musical led to a pair of films. ABBA. Uh, um, what is the, mu the ABBA musical? Um, Mamma Mia. Garlicky condiment is aioli. Uh, there we go. And headline. Headline. I'm not sure. Pupils surrounding. So I think this probably means the pupil of an eye as opposed to a pupil, a sort of school child or something like that. So it could be the iris of the eye. And appointment schedulers say, it could be you, maybe you have an assistant who schedules appointments for you. And then comic routines or bits. Yeah, the comic has some bits that they do, some routines. They're often steamed, then rolled. You could have steamed, and then you could have rolled oats for your porridge or what have you. Headline. I still don't... Oh, brain... Brainstem? The, the sort of line that, that connects your brain line in the... Not in the mathematic geometrical sense, but rather something connecting something. Uh, designation for mer very minor stars. Uh, so by stars, I think this means not astronomical objects, but rather celebrities. So it could be the B list or the C list or even the D list, maybe. I don't really think people ever refer to lists lower than that. Execu oh, it is the D list. Executes. If you execute something, you do something. So she executes it. She does it. Response to a knock on the door. Uh, go in. Go in. Sort of odd. I think you'd say come in. Go in. So here we have take me out. Go in. So are we going to be, is it going to be sort of out in, out in maybe? No, their history is celebrated in March. There, so it's plural in only three letters. That's interesting. Zip. Zip could be um, to move quickly, but it could also be nada for nothing. I'm just not seeing this theme. I'm very sorry. Reddit Q. Oh, this isn't brainstem. Sorry. Okay. Reddit Q&A is AMA for Ask Me Anything. So brain headline is brain, I don't know, skip, omit. You sort of skip something, you omit it, you, you ignore it. So maybe zip is not a then for, for nil. And their history is celebrated in March. Like devoted fans, you could be an avid fan of something, a devoted fan. Oh, brainwave? You said I've had a brainwave. I've just had an idea headline. I don't know. Why is that a line? Headline. I don't know. Michelangelo's only signed work. Oh, the P Pieta. I didn't know that, that that was his only signed work. That's fascinating. This must be a brainwave. I think that must be the answer. Why is it a line? I mean, I know the phrase brainwave. I just, I'm not getting the pun. 
Sorry about that. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm missing something extremely obvious there, but I just, I just, I'm not sure. Pet carrier features air holes, I suppose, um, to allow them to breathe properly. And then place for a reading could be a something crunch, e.g. candy bar. My first thought was the exercise, but no, I think it's candy bar based on the crosses here. And blank of the game. If you're ahead of the game, you're sort of doing well. You're, you're ahead of schedule. Boosters, e.g., are shots. You could have jabs, vaccinations, booster, sh booster shots. And acts of downsizing are guts, as in the company was gutted, the staff was downsized. It could be. Using it in this with this formation, guts, is a bit odd. You wouldn't say, ah, oh, there were guts over at this company. It's sort of strange, but um, I think it technically works. Okay, gripes are something. That's a real shame, you might say, that I can't figure out what the gripes are. Get lost. Go fly a kite. There we go. That's a sort of a quaint phrase, but it, it exists. Gripes are beefs. You have a gripe with someone. You have a beef with them. There we go. Um, also the name of a, of a show that I did watch. Be not beefs, but beef, and I thought it was very good. German sausage informally is a brat, bratwurst. Uh, and then Wurst in German just means sausage generally, I think. Uh, some spots are acne, maybe spots on your face. And concrete, wait, no, sorry, which is this? Yes, I always have to make sure I'm looking at the right clue. Of course, if I just looked at the top of the page, I would always know and not be confused, but I, can, I can't seem to overwrite the habit in my brain to look over at the, the bit in the scroll box for some reason some reason. Anyway, concrete component. Uh, sand, I would have thought. German sausage informally. Ah, this wouldn't be Brad. That's not, not it. So I'm missing something about the concrete component. Get big as a hashtag to trend. If something's trending on social media, it's sort of getting big. Perfect is A1 maybe? So blank say, so maybe not. Oh no, right, okay, it could be perfect as in to perfect, actually, to be as a verb. So I'm going to perfect my skills, I'm going to hone my skills, you could say. And so they say, uh, as a phrase, city where the 41 across was commissioned, city where the Pieta was commissioned would be Rome. Uh, and then bird with a bluish neck and green eggs is uh, Nimu. There we go. And to say it all is to enunciate, so to, to pronounce something clearly, to enunciate. And yen is a neighbor, oh, neighbor of Saudi Arabia, Yemen. Have I been missing this whole theme? Oh, wait a second, the me, is it the me from here? Take out. Take me out? Take me out of the other clues. Oh, so this isn't guts. It's not go in. I was right to think it should have been come in. And I just didn't, I just didn't, sorry. I didn't pay any attention. I was completely caught off guard here. I was not ahead of the game this time. Uh, so this is come, it was come in because we've taken me out. Oh, that's so good. And I just, I missed it entirely. Oh, right. Okay. So their history, I forgot to go back to this. I should have, because maybe it would have helped. Their history is celebrated in March. So women, because we've taken the me out of one. I always enjoy in these theme, in themes of this sort, when you have to remove some letters or put some letters into all of the theme answers, when the words end up being pronounced a completely different way as a result, as opposed to just tacking a syllable on without changing the rest of it. I, it because it's, it's linguistically more interesting and also more camouflaged. So, so coin, which is obviously an ordinary word, becomes come in, which bears no sort of oral you know, relationship to the original, really. And then one becomes women. Uh, yen becomes Yemen. So that, that one doesn't, doesn't change in that way, but, uh, but fair enough. And then we have this one as well. So concrete component, cement. There we go. No wonder I was confused about this. So uh, scent becomes cement. That, that, that one's a bit more similar to yen in that it doesn't uh, change very much in the pronunciation. But uh, but there we have it. Very clever. These all had to obviously be real words as well. So, so it remains quite impressive. 
All right, to fix firmly is to epoxy, maybe? To, my first thought was amend, as in to fix text, but there's no firmness about that. So to fix something firmly is to would be to, to ad adhere it with epoxy, a very strong adhesive uh, substance. And then some man manga adaptations, uh, maybe this isn't, Maybe this isn't epoxy because this is probably anime, right? Japanese cartoons. And then is it amend? Why would that be the case? I don't think it is. Right. Okay. Well, I don't know. Uh, backing for an argument, so to speak. Aid or a bet or uh, town near, okay, I don't know that one. T town near Arches and Canyonlands National Park. I'm not sure. Recess could be the res a nook or a nave or something, maybe if it's architectural recess. You could have a sort of recessed area in a home, a little nook, a breakfast nook that people often often have. A bit of dust, a moat, a dust moat. And give a th gave a thumbs up, okayed. Uh, backing for an argument, so to speak, could be ammo, ammunition for an argument. Town near Arches and Canyonlands National Parks is, oh, Moab, I have seen this before. And then fix firmly is embed, I see. So you could fix something firmly to something else by embedding it within it. If you sort of pressed something maybe into concrete before it's hardened, uh, you could embed it in it and it would be fixed firmly. Everyone's accounted for, all here. Earn, okay. So, uh, or what answering the starred clues will do in each case. make money? Oh, I didn't even pick up on that. My, my goodness, you have coin, which is money in a general sense. Then you have Korean one, right? And then Japanese yen and, um, well, there are several currencies that use the cent, um, that use that, 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 that divide their currency into cents, um, like the dollar or the Euro. Uh, look at that. Very impressive. I, I how did I not notice that? I, oh, that was ridiculous. Okay. I completely, just absolutely, did not pick up on today's theme in 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 good good fashion, uh, in good time. Alex, actress Alexis of Gilmore Girls. I'm not sure. Uh, pass is enact a law, for instance, like a Pac-Man shirt T-shirt say is retro, I suppose, because it's referencing a sort of uh, older video game. Visually assess something is to eye it up. Uh, if you're post deadline, you're late. I feel like I got the theme late today. Cream alternative could be a crew, so an off-white shade. Word with bus or door could be bus stop or door stop. Those are both, both things. Um, if one's not bold, one is meek or uh, something that ends with C, maybe. I don't know, but I don't know who this is. Okay, fine. Otis's feline friend in a 1989 film, Milo and Otis. That is one of the very first films I can remember seeing in the theater. It was Milo and Otis, which was a, a Japanese film, I believe, that was uh, dubbed into English. Um, during would be amid. Um, simple enough. Not bold. Oh, timid, of course. There we go. If you're not bold, you're timid. And pro tem for now. So um, you're acting, you know, you could be in a position pro tem um, because the, the, the previous holder of that position has departed, but there's no longer, there is not yet a... Uh, a sort of permanent holder of the position. Um, super selective could be elite, like a, I don't know, university say. And I still don't know who this is, actress selective of Gilmore Girls, actress, I just don't know. Idea, well, hopefully it's Bladell because ideal looks like model to me, though, sort of a, a model example, an ideal example, and yes. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad that wasn't crossed with another proper noun that would have been difficult for me to to infer. Uh, but there we have it. That was a very nice Thursday theme. I would say on the, on the, it, I agree, this was on the gentler side for a Thursday puzzle. And there was nothing particularly complicated or brutal about the theme. I just didn't, I just somehow didn't see it initially. And we have almost a kind of double revealer, which is really nice. That I haven't seen that very often. So take me out. And the result of taking me out of the, the sort of putative, the ostensible answers to these clues will result in making money. Very, very clever. So here we have come in becomes coin, women becomes one, 
uh, Yemen becomes yen and cement becomes cent. Uh, very good. A very, a very nice debut theme by Alison Perch. I think that was uh, very clever. And it certainly, certainly uh, stumped me for longer than it should have. But what can you do? That happens sometimes. Um, and that was that. That was the Thursday puzzle. Very nice. And let's do, let's see. Let's discuss some clues from yesterday's puzzle. I just realized I haven't set these aside yet, so I'm gonna have to <laughs> have to edit the video uh, while I um, while I, I call these up. But you won't notice the difference because I'll just stitch it right together. All right, so there weren't any corrections per se from yesterday's um, puzzle, but there were two two interesting comments about the theme. Uh, one, Garbaz <laughs> had a slight nit to pick about the choices of words, which was that uh, this person points out that the Russian word used in yesterday's puzzle does mean doll in general, any kind of doll, and not specifically a Matryoshka doll. So, you know, saying Russian, then that word would mean Russian doll. And then the Hebrew word did indeed simply mean national and, and, and so on. However, the, the Chinese characters used uh, for that answer already refer to Chinese checkers in particular, as opposed to sort of the broader concept of a, of a checkers-like game in general, which means that that clue arguably spelled Chinese, Chinese checkers, which kind of broke the theme a bit. So an incredibly, an, an impressively specific nitpick from, from Garbaz, which I, which I appreciate and approve of. And then uh, Alan Eitan pointed out something I didn't notice, which is which was an incredibly great observation. A nice feature of the theme is that the symmetric pair, symmetrically paired languages are related to each other and not related to any other language in the theme. So that's an even more um, an even more impressive element of that of that puzzle. And let's just sorry, I'm just call, bring this up another window so I can remind myself. So the symmetrical ones were Russian and Greek. That makes sense that they would be uh, related. And then Arabic and Hebrew, right? Okay, that makes sense. Those are both Semitic languages. And then um, Chinese checkers in the middle on its own. So. And not real, not related to those other languages. Very interesting observation. Thank you for pointing that out. I wouldn't wouldn't have occurred to me, even though in retrospect it's it's fairly clear. All right. Well, that was that. That was the puzzle for Thursday, July sixth, and the, the video is concluded as well. So I hope you join me tomorrow for the Friday puzzle, a themeless crossword, no theme, just solving. Uh, do join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.